it's Sarah and <clears throat> I hope my voice isn't too bad. I'm going to do a tutorial on this little holiday ginger. Um, this is one of the free downloadable patterns from the Plum Purdy website which is Renee Mullins. It's www.plumpurdy.com and I'll put that in the description box. Um, you just can download it right from, the, from her website. Um, I've already painted up these two. This was the first one actually. And I did paint the ribbon, but then I put stickles right on top of it. And I kind of really like how that turned out. Gives it the extra bling. And I wink a Stella to the gingerbread. I don't think I'm going to do that on the, this one that I do. This is the one I did last night. And I used a piece of ribbon. An actual piece of ribbon. And I think that looks really cute. I like how that turned out. Um, it's just a pretty high shine satin ribbon, I guess they call it. And then the one I'm going to do today with you guys, I actually am going to do on a heart, a heart shape. So um, let me get started telling you what we need. Um, download the pattern and that will tell you all the colors you need. And as I've said before, make do with what you have. You know, if it's a red, use a red. Don't get caught up in that if you don't want to go buy these specific colors. And actually, Michaels and AC Moore don't really carry a huge selection of these paints anymore um, so just get what's closer I, I actually have a conversion book and a whole bunch of stuff that helps me because I have paint I have lots of paint um, so you get your pattern you're gonna need the tracing paper to trace the line drawing onto so I have the little snowman on here but here's the gingy over here um, I, I might have made this smaller. No, I didn't. Um, this was just like, it's a little um, slight ornament. So I just traced it and I've made it fit on these little, um, I'm just using these paper mache shapes that you can get. Um, they still have them at Michael's. I was just there. Um, and graphite paper, which is uh, this type of thing. They have it in gray and white. I just keep mine in a pocket sleeve. I have tons of different ones um, and different scraps of tracing paper in here but you're going to need that. You need graphite to trace your pattern onto your piece um, which will look, this is just the snowman because I'm going to do the snowman too. I just want to finish these up because I'm going to start doing clay soon. Um, but So you will trace your pattern just the main design lines because like there's a star here there's stripes on this scarf and stuff like that, but you don't need to worry about those things until you base coat, um, get the color on. So on the, the gingerbread, I'll show you. So I've just based the scarf blue, the gingerbread camel, and then the candy cane is called sand, but I substituted flesh tan, I think it was. So, and then a kneaded eraser is the type of eraser Renee recommends. Um, and that will erase all your tracing lines so you don't have those on the piece you know you don't want to give away your secret that you actually trace the design on there so that's what you're going to need to start um i'll talk about brushes a little bit and i'm using curdy stop sorry um I'm going to use this five, I'm um, sorry, three eighths inch chisel brush. That's what I like to use to float with. Angle brush, I should say. Um, a couple of uh, flat brushes that I like to use to base coat with. And these two sizes came in handy. There's not a lot really going on this one. I like this tutorial. Come on in, Missy. She is too much. Um, but this size brush, this is what, a uh, number four. And look what happens already. I've left it in my water, and the water seeps into the into the brush, the wooden brush, and it cracked. Wow, I just bought this brush. That's crazy. I didn't even notice that. Look at that. The paint's coming off. Um, but anyway, the bristles are still holding good. That's what matters. But like, so I just used this one to base coat. I'm going to base coat a little bit with you. Um, and this one, I, I just used a bigger one to do this. Oh, obviously, before you do anything, you need to prep your piece. Um, and I always use um, 
all-purpose sealer, which it's over there, mixed with paint one to one. And I so for this I base this blue. I put all-purpose sealer, paint, mix them together, and paint the surface. Let it dry, sand it, and then go back with just the paint, a nice coat of paint on there. Let that dry. Then you can trace your pattern on and start painting. Um, what else did I want to say? Okay, brushes. I have here a couple of detail brushes. Uh, I have a number one round, a number three, or number four. And then this is my 10 slash zero. I guess it's a script liner. Yeah, script liner. This is for my little, like the eyelashes and stuff. The real, ooh, little cutesy detail stuff um, I do with that brush. So once you've got all your supplies together, going to get some paint out. And I like to use uh, these paper plates, or I was using styrofoam, which they just didn't have them the last time I went. And um, so I just, oh, I have a couple left over. But I actually bought coated paper plates, these coated paper plates. I mean, they're working fine. Um, just anything that you have that you can squirt a little bit of paint on and get your directions so the first thing I like to keep my drawing and my picture handy so I have this little I'll show you I have this little clip I put my picture in there um, I have my directions here put these to the side and yeah so that way I can have a reference Oh, back down here. Oh, also, you need water source. I have this type of a bucket. It's the Artist Loft Multi-Purpose Plastic Brush Washer. Excuse me. I like this because it has ridges on the bottom, and I run my brush across it, and it cleans the, the paint out. It's disgusting. It's filthy, but I like it. Uh, I have a paper palette. A disposable palette. This one's by Canson, and it is just basically like a wax paper. That's what I use to load my brush. I have a stack of paper towels, and they're kind of used. I've been using them, and then I let them dry out and use them again. So that is what you'll need to load your brush and and um, get going here. So. Um, Let's get out some honey brown and I'll show you how I base coat. I did one coat on here so far. Honey brown is right in the front. Oops. Shake up your paint really really well. I always have a Q-tip too hanging around because if you make a mistake you can get it off quick with a Q-tip. And I just put a little bit of paint out on my palette because you really just need enough to um, coat this gingerbread. You don't need a ton. So I'm going to use my bigger brush. This is a number 10. It's been around a while. It's not real good anymore, but once you get it wet, those the bristles stay together pretty well. No, they don't actually. Not this one they don't. Let's see. I'm going to use it anyway. I can still use it. I'm going to get um, load my brush. I pull the paint out of that original puddle and make a little slicker wetter puddle right next to it and that's what I use and go to my piece with. Yeah this isn't the best anymore. I, I wouldn't recommend this brush if you if you're working with something like this you could probably change it up and go with um, a little something nicer and I just work my way around that edge. Just we want this to just be opaque there's going to be a lot of shading and highlighting and details added to it. So, um, I am just getting the color covered. I'm going to cover any see-through areas. And I'm, I slide around and I use the chisel on my brush that isn't much of a chisel. But that's covered. I think that's pretty opaque. I can miss a spot right here next to But we're going to shade up against all. So we're going to continue on 
with the body. I usually put the paint down somewhere in the middle and then walk my way toward the edges so that you don't get ridges. If you go right to the edge, um, the edge of like, see that ridge, that paint, I can wipe it away easier if it's in the middle. But if it's like right up against my candy cane, it, it just makes a ridge. I don't want to leave a ridge there. I don't know why. Or, um, it makes your painting just look a lot smoother. This brush is done. I'm not using it after this. Um, it really is nice to have the, the tools that you... A really nice brush is, is a, a beautiful thing. <laughs> um, so I'm just getting this opaque. Which that looks good. Everything... There's no real see-through spots. I already did my um, candy cane pretty opaque and I think actually you know what that scarf looks good to me I'm not worried about it I think by the time we put all the stripes and everything on there it's going to be good so that's considered base coating okay so now the next step would be I'm going to get my tracing and show you on the tracing you have these detail lines you have his hand the stripes on the um candy cane and there's some bend lines and fold lines where the scarf um, crosses over itself the eyes are there I did not trace all the details because I do a lot of that myself I don't need to trace every little X I can make an X you know by myself um, even these little uh, icing lines which um, they're just the swirly line here that's the icing I do that myself I mean I just take my brush and just kind of swirl it around and that way it's just less erasing and every single one's going to look different that way it, it kind of I don't know it, it's the less I love that uh, Renee designs these pieces for us and uh, thank goodness she does because I you know can't draw that well but I can fudge it you know enough that I can make a, an icing line anyway all right so you're gonna let this dry and then when it's dry you're gonna trace all those other detail lines now um, the scarf lines the stripes on the candy cane the little face um, and the and the arm because then when we shade you'll see um, you'll know where you need to go with that color so I'll be right back um, with my tracing line you know what I didn't remember if I'd actually shown how I trace so I'm gonna go ahead and do that um, this way you know I'm covering a little bit of everything in all these videos um, so you take your tracing and you line it up first on top of the piece as best you can and I'm you know I've painted over the lines under the lines here it doesn't look like it's exact I don't know what happened like there's a piece of blue missing here um, all right, so you get that kind of lined up, right? Now you want to hold it in a way that you can maneuver the graphite paper behind it. Also, make sure it's the right side of the graphite paper. And by that I mean, see, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move that. Make sure the graphite paper makes a line. See how it made a line? If I turn it over and I do it, it won't make a line because this is where the graphite is. So make sure you're using the right side. I've traced things before and had no lines because it was upside down. Alright, so go ahead and um, get this lined up again and hold it in, like I said, in such a way that you can move the, the graphite paper around. Um, I kind of like that. And I think I'm going to turn it and I'm going to hold it right up here because there's nothing up here that I'm going to trace. So I'm going to be able to slip the graphite paper right underneath the tracing. Okay. And I'm using my, um, my ball tool or it's called a, um, a, uh, it'll come to me. Um, anyway, a stylus. That's what I, that's what they call it. 
and so I'm just going to trace this little line, this little, which I really don't need these, but I'm doing it. But I do want the candy cane lines because that way my um, stripes will come out nice and straight. So I'm just doing that. And then this little, ha his hand here, I'm going to just make that little curve there. Um, maybe this, this little piece here and this little piece. Okay, so I'm going to move that away and we'll see what we have. And this is just uh, very, they're not dark, obviously, I mean, I didn't press very hard, I guess, but they're there. And now I have, excuse me, a reference so that I can um, go ahead and put my stripes on and do some shading. All right, I have to go away and change my battery. I'll be right back. Okay, so I went ahead and just gave um, a couple of her other patterns have you undercoating anything red with a, a green color, celery green or something, Put first putting a coat of green and then coming back and uh, covering that with the red and it, it you would be done. So I didn't do that this time because I wanted to see what happened. She doesn't call for you to do it. Uh, base coat the candy cane with sand, mark off the stripes, paint the red stripes with country red. So I decided to follow the directions and um, yeah, we're going to need a couple more coats, possibly two more coats to get that solid, where I think if you undercoat that with the green, you do one coat of red and you're straight. So anywho, just FYI. Um, the first thing I want to do is we're just going to go straight down the directions The gingerbread says base with honey brown, then we're going to shade him with burnt sienna. And then we're going to deepen that shading with burnt umber, it says. And I just put it here and there, the darker color. So again, I'm going to bring you over to, this is called floating. And this is how I'm going to shade this whole piece. Um, use your angle brush, a side load float, and that's how you get your graduation of color. So I'm going to use my angle brush. Let's push, let's come over here. You go water blot, pick up some burnt sienna paint on the corner of that brush there, go to my paper palette and just work it into the bristles. Push it into the brush and there's water in the brush too. So the paint is kind of, I don't know if it's floating across, going from dark to light to water. All right, then when you go to your piece, and we're going to go um, around the candy cane here first. Let's see if I'm on camera. I put all the bristles on the surface. Oh, my dog. And slide it around. All the way under. Up against the candy cane. And stop. And... I mean, I feel like that's pretty good. I don't need to mop, but the mop is the tool that you would use then if if you felt like you had a water line, which, why was that wet? Huh. My mop had water on it, which is weird. It's wet. I don't know why. It's supposed to be dry. <laughs> Anywho, I didn't need to, so we're lucky. I have another mop anyway. Just going to continue that. So I go into my water, I blot, I corner load the brush, and I go back right pretty much where I was, put the paint down, walk into it, flip the brush, walk into it. And I like to have a lot of water on my brush because then the paint doesn't stick. It slides across the surface. All the bristles on the surface. And I pity pat the paint along. I kind of pull it and then bump up all the bristles up against the surface and you can see that graduation of color. Um, you want to stay out of the areas that you that are just freshly painted with this because you'll pick up what you did. But I can load my brush and go down around his hand. I'm going to start up against the candy cane so the color touches his hand. And then turn your piece and make sure you get the best to make sure you get the best result. 
I put a little color there. I'm going to rinse my brush and reload again. Now, I tend to use my big brush when I'm painting, but I've been using this 3 8 inch one, and I'm getting pretty used to it. Um, but it doesn't hold as much water, so I do find that I reload my brush a lot more. So then, you know what we'll do over here? I can put a little bit down this side of the scarf. Um, we need to go down this side of the scarf and around this side of his hand. Um, we're going to go around the top of his head, I think, because we're going to do cheeks on him. He's going to get cheeks, so we, we, we're going to use, I don't know what color it was, some a brick, heritage brick or something she uses. So I'm just reloading my brush, same thing, pushing the color into the brush, and then when I go to float, I just put all the bristles on the surface, and I slide. See, I'm I'm wet, but it's not really. Hopefully, you can see that. I don't like to zoom in too much because then I forgot I zoomed in, and then it. So that's good. Now these are getting dry enough now where I can go in and add the shading down around the candy cane. Here, I'll show you. I'm gonna load again. So I go to water. Like let it drip off. Blot pick up some paint and I go right back to that same place I've been going and I'm pushing all the bristles you don't want the paint to come all the way over to this edge because that makes like a, a stripe on your piece so I'm gonna go down the candy cane on this side and pull that borderline then we're gonna go down this side of the scarf and once you get floating that's when you'll really start to enjoy painting because it is a bit of a struggle in the beginning learning how to load the brush to get that consistent result and I mean people struggle with it they do um, I've taken lots of classes and lots of teachers not everyone was able to tell you how to do it, or did they even try? They would just say, okay, you're going to float here, float there. They didn't even teach you how to float. And I would be in classes with people, and they would just be struggling. And so I would sit there and show them how to do it, because the teacher didn't know how to show them, or they just didn't show them. So um, I'm hoping that this will be good for you. <laughs> <laughs> you're gonna this is how you float I'm gonna show you I'm gonna keep going back and showing you in the other tutorials I've done I've done the same thing and I plan on repeating myself quite a bit so um, and it takes practice you just have to practice you know I'm just gonna throw another um, coat of red on these stripes and see what happens this is the second coat of country red which is not a very opaque color. It's really looking sheer, and I really wish at this point that I would have undercoated it with the green because it works like magic. I just don't know why she didn't mention it in this uh, pattern packet. But in the other, um, I've done several of her free pattern packets. That's covering. Actually, that looks pretty good. Two coats. Uh, I just went out of line. So you take a Q-tip and just kind of go along it. You can clean it up. Plus it's going to be all shaded and um, a lot more detail on there, so don't worry. Um, but yeah, this actually looks like it's uh, going to cover in two coats. And there's still... I want to do one more spot on the shading. See, that looks pretty opaque. That looks good. Um, so the last little spot I want to do with the burnt sienna is the top part of his hand. Right here. So turn the piece. 
And I'm just going to put it here up against all the bristles on the surface. Don't just use the tip, you need the water too. But that gave him a defined hand there. Um, 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 um. We're going to go and shade around the outside next. I just feel like it. It's the background. Um, we're going to use Burnt Umber, and I think that's the color that she wants us to bump up the shading on the gingerbread, too. So where's my Burnt Umber? Here it is. I'll be right back. 